Okay, so we will continue with the hypothesis test that is originally binomial distributed and we are changing it to, bi uh, to normal, okay, to run the test. All right, so uh, in the previous video, we discussed the first example, example 18, uh, which is one tail test on the right. Okay, so now I will discuss one tail test left, which is example 20. And then um, for this example onwards, uh, I will just focus on the p-value method. All right, the p-value approach. Huh? So if you want to try out the critical value approach, you can try out on your own and see whether the result is tally or not. Okay, All right. So here, uh, there's a manufacturer claims that particular brand of seeds has a germination rate of 90%. So to test this claim, 150 randomly selected seeds are planted. So noted that 124 germinate. So this one, the 124 is actually the observed value that you can use it to calculate the p-value later. Use a suitable approximation to test at the 1% significance level whether the manufacturer is overstating. So the word overstating is the key word to help you to form the hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis. So they said the rate is the number is overrating. So overrating means that 90% um, is too high, it should be lower. Alright, so when you write out the now an alternative hypothesis. Okay, so originally they said is equals to 90%, which is 0 0.90. And then they uh and then who said there's there's some claims saying that this value is too high. Alright, the 90% is overstating the combination rate of the seeds. So to run the test, you should have you should have the p smaller than 0 0.9. Okay, so again you can write out the Alternative statement. So the manufacturer is oversitting the combination rate of the seeds. So this is the statement about the alternative hypothesis, first, uh, first step. All right, so now when I go to the second step, since I know that originally it is binomial distributed, which is 150 for your N and then 0 0.9 for the P. All right, so um, from here, if I double check with all the condition, right, I realize that I can change become normal distribution. So this is 135, and then the variance will be 13.5. Okay, now I want to calculate the p-value now, x, and then 124. So this is the observed value for you to use and calculate the p-value, right? So x, 124, so you should decide like whether it is smaller equal or greater equals to. So again, this method is straightforward. If you look at the alternative hypothesis, smaller so here should be smaller equal. Or if you don't like, you can use the mean value to compare and decide the sign. All right. Okay, so since I changed this become normal distribution already, so I had to standardize it. Uh. So when you want to standardize it, you copy the value 124 and you need to do the continuity correction. So 124 is included, so you have to cover the value that you need to plus 0 0.5 and then minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So when you divide it by standard deviation, it will be square root 13.5. So don't use the wrong formula for the test statistic here. Okay, then you get z smaller than negative 2.858 and then 1 minus 0 0.9979 therefore you will get 0 0.0021. So this is your p-value here. Okay, so this is my second step. The third step is I want to draw a diagram so that I can decide and make a decision later, right, for the test. Okay, so I will draw a normal distribution, the bell-shaped curve. My rejection region for this example is on the left because it is the one-tail test on the left. Okay, so this area is 0 0.01. Okay, so 0 0.01. And then now I want to put in the p-value that I calculated just now is 0 0.0021, which means it should be a smaller area, okay, than the 0 
zero one. So this is zero point zero zero two one. So if you look at the border line, okay, of the area, the blue color area, all right. So you see that this line itself falls under the rejection region, right? Therefore, your conclusion, your decision should be you reject the null hypothesis, and then you can write out a statement of your result. So you can say that the manufacturer is the manufacturer overstating the rate or not? Yes, right, because you reject a null hypothesis. So you should, you should write that the manufacturer is overstating okay, the germination rate of the seeds. All right, so this is a complete test for the binomial changing to normal distribution. Right? All right, but for this example, I only show you the p-value approach. Huh? All right, so this is a complete test. Okay, huh? so again, your, your task is to complete the example 21 in the notes, and then you check the answer later in the PDF file that I will upload to the platform. Okay, then continue further. Example 22. Example 22, we are talking about detailed test already. All right, but still the same. And generally, all the concepts, the steps are still the same. So you realize that when you try more and more tests, right? When you you try more and more questions about the hypothesis test, huh, um, the flow will be smoother when you try more and more. And then after that, you realize that hey, this kind of question are quite easy. Okay, quite easy to score lah, because the steps are quite standard, right? Okay, so let us have a look. Uh, if both are equally likely of any day of the week. Then the proportion of the baby's bonds at the weekend should be 2 over 7. Okay, so you're having a random sample of 490 children and then 132 were born at the weekend. So again, 490 will be the end, 132 will be your observed value. Okay, does this provide evidence at a 5% significance level that the proportion of the baby's bond at the weekend differs from? 2 over 7. So the word defer helps you to write out the alternative hypothesis for this question. Alright, so they only say defer, but they didn't say is it greater or smaller, right? So defer means not equal. So you are testing P equals to 2 over 7 against the alternative hypothesis P is not equal to 2 over 7. Alright, then again, you can write out the statement of the alternative hypothesis. Then you can say that the proportion Okay, of babies born at the weekend differ from 2 over 7. So this is my first step. Alright, then now I proceed to the second step to calculate the probability, the p-value. Alright, so I'm having and equals to 490, I want to test on 2 over 7. Okay, so I realized that it fulfills all the three conditions. Therefore, I can change it become normal distribution. So NP is 140, NPQ is 100. Okay, so you want to calculate the probability for x and then 132. 132 is your observed value, right? This one. Okay. All right. So now our, pro our uh, main job is to get the correct sign. Should I put in smaller equal or greater equal? Okay. So for this two-tailed test, right, there's no other option. Uh. You need to get the mean first. So the mean is 140, right? This one. The mean is 140. So you imagine 140 is in the center. 132 is before 140. Lah. And then when you calculate the area, right, to run out the test, you are calculating the area by the side one. So you want to calculate the area smaller than 132. Therefore, it is smaller or equals to. Okay, so again, you will see that when you want to calculate all this p-value, right, always got equal sign here. Right? Smaller equal or greater equal. The equal sign is always there. Why? 
because according to the question here, you see the one, three, two is included in what they want to test. So you always have the equal sign. Okay. All right. Then now, uh, once you decide the sign already, then you want to change it become Z, no? because this is normal distribution, right? Okay. 132. Continuity correction is plus 0 0.5. Okay. Minus mean divided by standard deviation. Right, then you are get that smaller than negative 0 0.75. Okay, then you calculate the probability. Okay, so the p-value that you get for this example is 2266, 0 0.2266. So I put the continuity correction, I highlight it here so that you are aware of it, right? You have to do the continuity correction. Okay, so after I get the p-value, then I will draw a graph to help me and decide, make a decision. So again, I draw a bell-shaped curve, and this is a two-tail test. Therefore, I will have two rejection region on both left and right-hand side. Okay, then for each area here, the area is 0 0.025. Because alpha is 5%, you have to divide it by two, right? So 0 0.025. Okay, so once you draw the graph already, now you have to put in your p-value, this area, into your calculation, into your graph. Lah. All right, so because this is on the left, right, smaller equals to 132, so you have to draw it on the left also. Okay, so now 2266 generally is bigger than the 0 0.025 area, right? So that means 0 0.2266 will have a bigger area. Okay, so this blue color area is 0 0.2266. And then this line itself falls under the acceptance region. Okay, so you see that the line falls under the acceptance region. Therefore, you accept the null hypothesis, which means you do not reject the now hypothesis okay and then again you make a conclusion so if you do, didn't reject the now hypothesis means that the proportion okay of babies born at the weekend from 2 over 7. Okay, so this is a complete test for two-tier test of binomial changing to normal distribution. Alright, so again, your uh, homework or your task is to complete the example 23 and check the answer later. Alright, so here we ended our hypothesis test for binomial distribution uh, related to binomial distribution. So there are two cases generally. The first one is a small sample size where you use the binomial distribution formula to calculate the p-value and then to, to draw the graph diagram, okay? But you cannot draw the normal diagram here, lah, okay? In the small sample test, all right? Then you use binomial purely in that kind of test. Then this one is originally is binomial distributed, but since it fulfills all the three conditions, you can change it to become the normal distribution. So you still carry on the same steps here, just that, for the graph or the uh, for this one diagram, uh, you are using the bell shaped curve because you already changed your calculation become normal distribution. So this is what we have about binomial for all the tests related to binomial distribution. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to the next type of distribution, which is Poisson. Okay, so again for Poisson distribution, we are going to use it to test the sample. Uh, sorry, the population mean as well the lambda. Alright, so we'll discuss more in the next